Hello everyone, welcome to my new video. For a long time I want to make a fly cutter for this mini mill. Um, <laughs> I have no idea, is it possible, uh, will it work or it's just a stupid idea and nothing will happen. Uh, but now we will see. Uh, I have a small piece of uh, six millimeter uh, haspid steel. If I will connect it somehow like here, um, it will be exactly the fly cutter. Maybe I will cut it a little bit because it's quite a long for this machine. It's probably will touch this protection or maybe not. I will see. Um, as a base for the fly cutter, I could uh, use a plain steel. So um, I will cut a piece and then a little bit of uh, working on the lace, um, seven millimeter shaft and holder for the high speed steel piece. Let's cut the steel. It's done as I want, and uh, now I will cut from this side all the material I don't need. As I'm making uh, all this tool for my milling machine, I measured the shaft length I need, and it's uh, 22 millimeters. So I will mark all this stuff and finally have what I could use for marking the <coughs> tools. Okay, 22 and a half. I will do 22. Then I will have a half millimeter to force what I'm doing is completely incorrect because actually I need to use completely different measuring tools for all these things, but I'm using what I have quite often. So here it is. This part I need to do seven millimeters, but I want to um, harden this tool afterwards. So the shaft and uh, probably the head of the tool I don't need, but uh, the shaft I want to harden a little bit. And to do that, so how I will do, I will um, reduce the diameter at the moment to the seven and a half millimeters. Then I will do the hardening and then half of the millimeter I will um, reduce afterwards after the tool will be almost done. So I will cut uh, the uh, position for the cutter, uh, all this part and then uh, reface all the tool and uh, check all the dimensions I should have. Um, hopefully it's more correct way to do it. 
Okay, nevertheless, well, let's cut. I finished very rough the cut on the lathe of the future tool. And now I need to move to the milling. I want to cut with 10% angle on the bottom of the tool. And then I will need to cut a row for the cutter and uh, another one part uh, where the screws will be that will hold the cutter. Um, to hold this uh, tool, I will use the chuck on the rotary table. I will place it like this. Hopefully it will fit into the mill. Yeah, I have a little bit of place here still, uh, but I have the problem. So I need to do a 10% angle. So it will be like this. Um, I could measure it easily with the measurement tool, but um, it's um, a little bit difficult for me. I never did it before, um, at least with some persistence. So I will hold the rotary table that it's not moving. So I will not use it, of course, like a rotary table. I will use it like, like a, just like a post for all mine movements and yeah. We'll see now what I could get out from it. There will be a lot of what it. What will happen if I will just do some holding like this? How it will work? I have no idea. Okay, here is zero, and here we have where I could measure it. Have yeah, it's not really working. So, what I will do, I will unscrew the chuck. In this case, I will have the actual plate where I could measure with something. Okay, how, now we have five degrees, I want to have 10. So I will need a little bit more here. Let's have a look how it all works. And will it at all. Again, what I'm doing is completely wrong. And in normal case, the operation like this should be done on the uh, sinus table or something like this, but um, definitely not on the meal with uh, rotary table that are holding and with some uh, plates of metal on the side. So, or at least I have had to have them. Uh, also with the 10 degree angle. I could try to do with the things. Maybe they will work better. Let's have a look. And the same. Looks like it's one of the best solution I could found. And of course, if I will move this thing, I have the difference of the angle. So um, again, 
this tool is uh, doesn't need to be super careful and if i will have not exactly 10 degrees if i will have uh, uh, 11 degrees or 9 degrees nothing will happen it's just kind of recommendation um, this sync is not working for the um, really persistent measurements and i don't need really persistent measurements that's the point of all this crap i'm trying to do now when everything fits i could start cutting It's done, it's nice and clean. Now the slot for the cutter and a place where the screws will be. The cutter should be located like this. And the this side of the cutter is exactly in the middle of the tool. So that means that slot for the cutter will be on that side. Also, I will cut here to make a screws from this side to the cutter that will hold the cutter. I need um, six millimeters from the center. It will be the side of the tool that will hold the cutter. In this side, I could have a little bit bigger slot, but not there. Um, I need to measure it as accurate as possible. Of course, it will be, if it will be not 100% accurate and cutter will be moved uh, just a little bit in some side, uh, it's not a um, super big issue, but uh, better, of course, to have it as accurate as possible. The outer diameter of the tool is 34.2 millimeters. At the moment, I will try to found as accurate as possible directly with the mill the uh, um, this point so where, where mill will touch tool and then i will move a mill this side to the 11.1 millimeter so from this side of the tool to the side of uh, uh, the slot for the cutter should be 11.1 millimeter. I have now cutter on the position where slot should be. And now it's a time to cut a little bit more of this tool. Let's do the first run with half a millimeter. Now when all cutting is done, I need to do the holes for the screws that will hold the cutter itself. Assembly is pretty easy, just put the cutter inside the holder and put the screws there. Only one thing that will be left is to sharpen the cutter and I could try, maybe it will work. I'm almost sure that with this length of cutter probably it will not because uh, the power of the machine will be not enough. The uh, th there, there is a lot of reasons. Uh, will it work with uh, a little bit smaller cutter? Probably yes, 
uh, with soft materials I'm almost sure that it will work with um, steel um, I'm almost sure it will not but let's try let's give it a try The first good thing is it fits to the machine itself, uh, even with the full length cutter. But as I mentioned, this machine will definitely not work with uh, so long cutter. Another good point that I see, it's no vibration on the machine when cutter is rotating, so all should work. Now after several more tries and failures, that's what I was stopped with. So it definitely works with aluminium and works quite quite well. And the result is pretty nice. At the end. Much better question will it, will it work with the steel? Let's check now. And this will be it for this video. It's possible, it's working with the steel, it's working with the soft materials like aluminium. Uh, the most important thing is uh, to sharpen the cutter itself and with the small size of the cutter it works pretty well. Thanks for watching and see you next time.